Welcome to the final Empire Earth 2 tutorial. What can I do? This tutorial will introduce you to special resources, nuclear devices, regional powers, air power, and the Crown's system. As the world nears the beginning of its most deadly conflict, World War II, the Aztec Empire and the United States remain friendly and consult closely with each other on plans to face the coming war. Unfortunately, the Aztec's oldest neighbor, the Incan Empire, has become increasingly unstable and is now run by a fascist regime. As war looms in Europe and Asia, the Incan military continues to expand, and all signs seem to indicate that they will soon enter a direct alliance with the Axis powers. All the Aztecs can do is stay vigilant and respond as decisively as possible to any acts of war the Incans may be planning. Besides displaying your mission objectives, this full-screen map can also serve as a quick and easy way to manage your empire's economy. Click on the Citizen Manager button yep. to see your entire resource collection efforts in detail. Here. Here. I will. What can I do? screen shows an overview of your resource gathering efforts for your whole civilization. Icons both in the right hand column and on the map represent each resource. The numbers next to each resource tell you how many citizens are assigned to collecting it. Idle citizens are attached to your cursor and can quickly be assigned to a resource by left clicking a specific one on the map or by left clicking a type of resource such as wood in the panel to the right. Right clicking a resource takes citizens off and adds them to your idle citizen pool. It is also possible to order the construction of certain resource collection buildings from this screen. The farm, for instance, can be built to harvest food. The oil there can be constructed to drill for oil. Oil is one of the special resources mentioned earlier. Special resources appear and disappear throughout the different epics of the game. In early epics, you can harvest resources like tin and iron to help build military units. But in later epics, you'll have to construct special buildings like the oil Derrick. Go ahead and build an oil derrick now. You can click the button on this screen and move your cursor over any oil resource on the map and left click to place it. An idle citizen will be sent to build it. Once it is built, any citizens that were constructing it will automatically garrison inside. An oil derrick gathers no oil unless it is garrisoned. The more citizens garrison, the faster the oil is gathered. You will now accumulate oil at a steady rate. Another type of resource that requires a special building in order to be gathered is technology. If you assign some citizens to the Tech Points resource in the right-hand panel, those citizens will move to the nearest university and garrison it. Tech Points are critical to researching technologies and moving your civilization forward through the epics. Press the Tab key to exit this screen when you are ready to continue. Open the Tech Tree to see what technologies are available to be researched this epic. Every epic has 12 technologies that can be researched. These are broken up into three categories that relate to different aspects of the game. Military technologies occupy the top row and relate mainly to the attributes of military units. Economic technologies occupy the middle row and relate to resource collection and construction costs. Imperial technologies occupy the bottom row and relate to the attributes of special forces and some of your civilization's overall characteristics. Each technology gives a special bonus which you can see by placing your cursor over one until the tooltip appears. Researching technologies is how you'll spend your tech points, but you'll also spend them on advancing to the next epic to open up new technologies. You'll need to research at least six technologies in an epic in order to advance to the next one. At this time, it looks like you only need one more, so go ahead and pick one to research now.
advance to Epic 13 by left clicking on the flashing Epic display at the top of the screen. Yes. Yes. Ready. Say you, I shall uphold my oath, a fine clan. I shall uphold my oath, a fine clan. What say you? Ready when you no are. No time like the present. What say you? Ready when you are. What say you? Ready when you are. technologies of Epic 13 have replaced those of Epic 12 in the tech tree, but you still retain the bonuses from the technologies you have researched. However, the technologies that were left unresearched are now unavailable, so it is always a good idea to think carefully about when to Epic up and when to keep researching. Gathering special resources and researching technologies are good ways of making your civilization stronger. But securing an alliance also helps. Yes, sir. Move. Open the diplomacy panel now. What can I do? Click on the Propose Alliance icon located in the row belonging to the Americans. This will open up the negotiating table where you can craft exactly the kind What's of safe? diplomatic agreement you would like to have with this player. On the Terms tab, you can specify how long the treaty will last how much both players will be able to move through each other's territories, how much line of sight will be shared, and what kinds of restrictions will be placed on harvesting each other's resources. The other three tabs are for determining how many resources, units, and territories you might wish to tribute to the player in exchange for accepting the alliance. Let's offer the United States a good deal for being our friend. Make sure the Terms tab is selected and set the border permissions to trade. This will prevent any units besides trade units from crossing into each other's territory. Now, go to the Units tab and press the Select button. The diplomacy menu goes away, but your treaty offer has not disappeared. It's just waiting for you to select which units you wish to tribute in the proposal. Select a citizen and click the diplomacy button again, and you'll see the selected citizen is now included in the deal. Finally, go to the Territories tab and select your territory that borders the United States player. An icon appears on that territory, indicating it will also be included in the deal. When a territory is given to another player, all buildings on that territory are given over as well. Now, click the Send button and then exit the menu by clicking on the Close button. It seems the Americans have another kind of treaty in mind. Enter the Diplomacy menu again and click View Proposal to see the Americans' counter-offer. When a player makes a counter-proposal, you can easily see what that player changed by looking at anything highlighted in red. In this case, the only thing that has changed is that he has made a modest demand of resources. Click Accept to accept the treaty as it is and formalize the alliance. Excellent. Now let's look to our frontier. Go to where the signal flare has just appeared by pressing the space bar and select the outpost there. This outpost is the only thing guarding the border between you and the Incans. A great way to keep an eye on the isolated outpost is to use the picture-in-picture -picture display in the lower right corner of your screen. To use picture-in-picture, -picture, select Settings from the main menu 
Click on the Video tab and click on Enable Picture in Picture. You can have this display always show the outpost if you wish by simply making a bookmark. Center your screen over the outpost and press Control F1. Note, one of the slots below the PIP display has become highlighted. That means that bookmark number one has been set. Since it is the only bookmark set, it is the one currently being shown. Not only do you now have a real-time view of the activities in this area, you can also manipulate objects seen when you are. so you can literally be in two places at once. Since the United States is our ally, we should use them to try to coordinate an attack. For this purpose, we can do one of two things. First, we can place a map flare at a location on the main screen or mini-map to where our ally will attempt to send forces, if possible. You don't have to do this now. But to place a flare, you can click on the flare button located below the mini-map or press Alt-Y to ready a map flare and then click on the main screen or the mini-map where you wish to place it. Alternatively, you could use the War Plans feature to send your ally a detailed plan of attack. Access the War Plans tool now by clicking the icon with the cross swords near the mini-map or press Alt-Shift-P. From here, you can draw a set of directions and specify an objective on the map and send it to an ally for their consideration. Now press the button with the crooked arrow on it. This is the path tool. You can set waypoints on the map by left clicking and then right clicking to end placement. This tool is used to show what path your units will take as part of this plan. Now click the create target point button and left click on the map to indicate a focused target point for this plan. Now press the circle button to create an area on the map. Hold down the left mouse button while dragging the mouse to create a circular area of any size. This tool is used to indicate an area of interest rather than just one target. All of the items created so far will show up on the mini-map on the main screen if they are part of a currently accepted or sent plan. However, text labels are only visible from the War Plans page. You can add short messages to other players or name locations with labels by selecting the tool and left-clicking on the map and typing in the text box. You can also manipulate anything you have drawn so far by using the Select Element button. Select this button and click and drag any element you have created to move it to another location. You can drag the end of the path arrow if you just want to change its direction, or you can drag any waypoint on the path itself if you want to change its course. You can also resize the circle you made by clicking and dragging its edge. You can change the color of any new elements you wish to place by selecting a new player color. This way you can give orders to multiple players on the same war plan. By default, all war plan tools use your own player color. Now select the USA player's color and select the path button and create a path on the map that you wish your ally to follow while executing this war plan. Anytime you wish to discard the war plan you are currently working on, you can click the Delete War Plan button. When another player sends you a war plan, you will receive a text message at the top of the screen and their name will highlight and flash on the panel on the right. If you click on their name, the war plan they sent to you will automatically be displayed on your screen. If 
that player has sent you more than one war plan, you can click on a drop-down box next to the player's name to select which one you wish to view. If you receive a war plan from an ally and you wish to send it back to him with changes, you can select the Copy War Plan button to make a version you can alter before sending it back. When you are finished creating or modifying a war plan, you can quickly send it to all of your allies at once by pressing the Send to Allies button. However, sometimes you may not want all of your allies to see your plans. The Send Current War Plan button will take you to a panel where you can customize which players will receive your war plan. Now press the Send the Current Plan button and choose the United States player and click Send. Your ally will do his best to comply with your request. But remember, as with human allies, computer allies don't always do things the way you plan. Once you've sent a war plan, you can create an entirely new one. One, if you like, but by clicking the Create button, this will wipe your current plan off the What's screen, the plan? but it will not be erased. Right away. Systems online. You can go back to viewing your original plan. deleting the one you're currently working on, or by sending it and selecting the old one from the drop-down box next to your player name. For now, let's exit this screen by pressing the tab key. Commander. As our ally prepares to execute the war plan, let's do a bombing run. Select the airport being signaled on the map. The airport is the center of your air power. From here you can set a mission flag, which determines where your air units will patrol. You can determine who goes on the mission and who doesn't by using the Add Aircraft to Mission button. This button is defaulted to always being on, so any planes produced will immediately fly out to the mission flag. Finally, there is the Scramble button, which ejects all aircraft into the sky, which is useful if you're just about to lose the airport to the enemy. Select the Set Mission Flag button and place the flag over the enemy base being signaled. Once set, your garrison plane should take off. If not, simply select the airport's information panel and click Add Aircraft to Mission. The basic relationship between air units is that fighters are good against all air units, fighter bombers are good against naval units, and bombers are good against land units. An aircraft carrier is a naval unit you can use a new dock that functions just like an airport, except it doesn't produce any aircraft. Silos. Go to the area being signaled and select the citizens there.
select the silo building under build military structures and place it nearby. Now, select the silo. The only thing a silo can do is house a nuclear missile. If you build one here, you cannot build another at this silo until you have launched it. You launch the missile by selecting it from the silo's action panel and right-clicking in the main view where you wish to strike. Build a nuclear missile and launch it at the Incan City when you're ready. What can I do? explosion occurs, the devastating blast not only inflicts a great deal of damage to everything, friend or foe, in its considerable blast range, but also leaves a fallout effect that causes damage to units for a short time in the area. One of the ways you can judge your performance in Empire Earth 2 is by the crown system. The crowns are indicators of your absolute performance in the game, as well as your relative performance to other players. There are three crowns military, imperial, and economic. Each crown corresponds to a branch on the tech tree and are similarly color-coded. Once a full branch has been researched in any given epoch, the corresponding crown is then available for you to capture. If you are the first to research the entire branch, the crown is automatically awarded to you if no one else currently owns it. If not, then capturing a crown is achieved by accomplishing goals that correspond to that crown. For instance, dropping bombs on your enemy has earned you many points toward earning the military crown. Once you earn the crown, no one else can have it for a set period of time. After that time is up, the person who has progressed the most towards earning it will have it awarded to him. Earning a crown grants a special power of your choosing. Now, open the tech tree and research all of the military technologies in order to win the military crown. Congratulations! Now, click on the military crown icon in the upper right corner and choose a power from the list. This power will be available to you for the duration of the time you hold the crown. When the time expires, every player's eligibility and crown score is assessed and the crown is awarded again. When you have chosen a power, go back to your city center. Notice there is another unit here. This is a military leader. Am you I have needed? a military leader by winning so the military crown. Other leaders become available by winning other crowns. The leader has both a passive and active effect on other units. A passive power is one that projects a beneficial effect on all your units in a radius around the leader without any direct input from you. A button on the leader's UI that only activates when you click it and select a target represents an active power. Send your leader to join with the forces being saved right now. Am I needed? Ready when you are. Of course. No time like the present. Ready. Who's hurt? Ready. I will. All systems ready. Deal. Get your sense. Notice the blue glow on your 
troops near your leader. That means ready they when have you a are. positive effect being played on them. A red glow means ready when you are. Of course. No time like the now present. Press the apostrophe key to enter coordinated attack mode. While in this mode, all of your move and attack orders will be stored on screen graphically instead of being instantly carried out. Ready when you are. This way, you can give multiple groups different sets of orders, which they will execute simultaneously once you exit tactics mode. For now, just tell group one, group two, and the leader to move into the ink and city, and press the apostrophe key Ready again to have them follow your orders. Keep control group two selected for a little while. Select the unit icon, flashing in the unit information panel. We'll talk about the characteristics of different civilizations. This is the Aztec's unique unit for epics 11 through 15. He operates like a medic, automatically healing your wounded units as he comes across them. Each civilization has a unique unit that they can build, and each one changes from the early game to the late. Each civilization has other things that make it distinct from one another, but civilizations Ready. also fall into regional groups. The Aztecs, yes. for example, share some things in common with the Incans because they are both part of the Mesoamerican region. For instance, both share the same regional power. Place your cursor over the flashing icon to get details about this power. This is the Mesoamerican late game power of the When you activate this power, for a short period of time, any unit your priests convert will create another unit just like him under your control. Now, let's move into the final lesson. Make sure your units target and destroy the city center. When that is done, bring some citizens into the territory and build your own city center. Alternatively, you could just capture the Incan city center. Either way, this is how you capture a territory. Ready when you are. The map is divided up into territories, which you can see by selecting the territory overlay under the mini-map. Controlling more territories allows you to build more city centers and houses, which in turn allows you to build more troops. Building houses in a territory also has the added benefit of increasing the bonus to any resources collected in that territory. Some victory conditions depend on controlling a certain number of territories or a specific territory like this one. When you have seized the Incan territory, this tutorial will end. Good luck and enjoy Empire Earth 2. Of course. No time like the present. No time like the present. Of course. The objective is clear. Of course. No time like the present. Of course. No time like the present.
protect the present. Of course, my objective is clear. No time like the present. Of course. have contained the biggest threat to security in the Western Hemisphere. The future of Aztec culture and technological progress is assured. Congratulations on completing the Empire Earth 2 tutorials.